Jesus, precious Jesus, you are friend and hope and joy and life to me. Precious Jesus, you're my life, you mean all to me. You're the rock on which I stand, you're the one who holds my hand you're the fountain where my thirsty soul can drink and you're the breath of life to me and my light when I can't see precious Jesus, you belong to me. Oh, precious Jesus, precious Jesus, you're a friend and hope and joy and life to me precious Jesus precious Jesus you're my life you mean all to Be thankful unto the Lord for his good and his mercy endureth for how long? Forever. Forever. Brother Parker, there's not a day goes by what we don't think about you, Sister Parker, the church. And the reason why it is we have try to have prayer with God every day and we pass y'all by. Boy, nobody like uh, God, nobody like friends. So it's been good. I, I don't know how many years been coming here, but uh, all the years have been good years. I, I don't know. These here men of God are few and far apart, but there's still some around. But they are passing off the scene. And very many of them, like old Brother Parker, Brother Rice, some of these done left out here. Yeah. Brother James Epps. Yeah. But I tell you, God have them around till he comes for the church and they'll be around. Yeah, and uh, got one coming up here, hopefully, Isaac. It's good to have him with us this morning. We're well, a little bit late. We'll stop by to check. Sister Children and have prayer with her and had a little fellowship with her and it's hard to leave when you get to bawling and squalling and <laughs> praying and all that stuff and old memories and stuff like that. But anyhow, we made it and it's good to be here. I'm going to ask Isaac if he will stand up and just say a few words. I won't be long. Testify to the good grace of God. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm glad that the Lord saved me. I'm thankful for my pastor. I'm glad to be here this morning. I'll tell you what, the Lord sure has done things for me. He's blessed me in ways I never could have thought. I told Brother Paul on the ride up here, I said, boy, the way the Lord used me, I just don't understand it. 
I don't care why he would save me, why he would use me. I'm still young. I'm still a kid, but I'll tell you what, I'm thankful how that God has never failed me. He's never left me behind. And as long as I can, I'm going to keep on going with God. I'll tell you what, I am thankful that the Lord saved me. I mean, I was going to hell off of the church pew. I remember God came down to me one night, showed me I was lost and dying and going to hell. And he said, I'll save you. All you got to do is ask him. Let me tell you something. I went down that night and got saved. I've had a joy inside of me ever since. I'll tell you what, Brother Andy, I've been fired up. I'll tell you, I am thankful for what the Lord has done for me. As Isaac anywhere he testifies, here, yonder, out in the woods, you can hear him. Sound like a bunch of mess of bees out there, you know, buzzing. <laughs> Loves God, and I hope God really used him, brings him up music. All right, well, let's get in some scriptures this morning. Brother Parker, it's good to be with you. Just to be here. I've already been blessed through the singing, song service. Just to be here means everything. See all the people. Won't be long, going to be a gathering in heaven. I'm going to see Sister Parker again. <laughs> well, the Lord's good, isn't he? I don't know what's going to happen, but I hope it breaks out on us. I sure does. John chapter number 21, if you want to stand up, we'll read a few verses of scriptures. Here's what the scripture says, and John chapter 21, after these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and on this wise showed he himself. There were together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathaniel of Canaan and Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter saith unto them, notice what he said, I go a fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night the Bible said they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus saith unto them, Children, have ye any meat? And they answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fish. Therefore that disciple, whom Jesus loved, saith unto Peter, It is the Lord. Yeah. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girded his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were two hundred cubits, dragging the net with fish. As soon then as they were come to the land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid their own and bread. Jesus saith unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fish and a hundred and fifty and three and for all there were so many. Yet was not the net broken. Jesus saith unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples durst asked him, Who art thou, knowing that it was the Lord? Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them and fish likewise. And this is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. Father, thank you for a wonderful service already. We certainly appreciate being here in your presence among your people. And we do pray, God, you'd help us today that we might be a blessing to your people I pray, God, for the touch of God to be upon us. We need to touch, Lord, the old-fashioned power of God. I pray, God, you'd touch us. I pray, God, you'd help us 
I pray God you'd move with conviction. Even maybe someone might want to be saved and God you'd save them. God you'd help us all to be mindful. Lord it's just about over with. The race just about been run. The battle is just about been fought. Work's just about been done. Lord, it'll be over before we know it. We'll be in heaven with you. I pray, God, you'd remind us there's still a little work to do and we'd work till Jesus comes to get us. God, help us to be, Lord, what we're supposed to be for you. And God, we'll praise you and thank you for who you are and what you do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated after reading the word of God. I'm mindful in this chapter about how God is God. I'm mindful about how man is man. And somebody said, uh, what are you talking about? Well, this is the third time since the resurrection that the Lord appeared unto his disciples. They're hard-headed. Some of them just hard to learn. That God is in control. Can I tell you this morning that God is in control? He's in full control. God is. Three times somebody says the charm is the old saying. I don't know about that. But I tell you what, he does use the number three a lot in the Bible. And I'm thankful that, uh, you know, I'm glad he keeps coming back when we don't get it. He'll get us hemmed up to, until we do get it. And I like to get it. Now, if I'd stay with old brother Tully down through the years, I'd probably got more than I, I've had now or i got now. But I, I tell you, I appreciate God trying to help me. Uh, just an old-fashioned country preacher that's just trying to do the will and the work of God. It's good to be saved and it's good to know God. God is after Peter. I don't tell you whether you're in a little ship or big ship. If you notice, uh, some's in one ship and one ship's ahead of the other ship and some little ships behind the big ship if you want to call it the big ship. But if you're on the old ship of Zion, whether you're in a little ship or a big ship, we're all going to the same place. Thank God for that. Somebody said this is a big church. I don't know about that. Whether it's a small church or a big church, as long as you've been saved by the grace of God and you know the Lord, I tell you, you're heaven bound this morning. It's a wonderful thing to know God. I don't try to encourage you this morning. Maybe, maybe you're like old Peter. Peter went to fish in the wrong time. I, I said this to Isaac coming over here. He was in the boat and then he got out of the boat didn't have any fish when he got in the boat. When he got out of the uh, out of the boat, he had more fish than they needed. I mean, God is God. God is full is in full control. I don't know about you, but I do believe in the lordship of Christ. Now you might not have made him Lord yet, but I want to tell you, he's God. He is Lord over all. I'm mindful of that every day of my life. Uh, In the book of Philippians chapter 2, 9, 10, 11, Paul penned these words down. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven, of things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hey, He is Lord today. He's God. He is in control this morning. Uh, I tell you, and He'll prove to you uh, before it's over with, if you're bucking up against Him and won't yield to Him, surrender your life to Him, Who He is if you belong to Him. He is God. He's a potentate of all potentate. Thank God He sure is. And I tell you, He's a wonderful God today. Isn't He wonderful that He let us come to a place like His and assemble together? I mean, we're from Tennessee. You're over here in Missouri. And He got us together. We've been together before. But this is a wonderful time. This is what we call the Lord's Day. Uh, not the Lord's day when he was crucified.
crucified. Uh, I tell you, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Uh, let us rejoice and be glad because God's made and we can come together. Uh, that was a different day, but thank God for this day. I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm in the ship, uh, the old ship of Zion, and I'm glad I'm going over on the other side. In a little while, we'll make the trip. Uh, Peter was in the ship, out of the ship, but he wasn't under the ship. I've been under the boat. I, I tell you, God sometimes has to get our attention, especially when we get uh, weary and tired and might want to let some things slip by and back off from doing some things. It's the best place you can be is right in the center of the will of God. That's the best place you can be. I tell you, God showed him them who he was. But he's really after Peter. He's calling Peter. He's after Peter. I, I mean, really, he's wanting to get Peter's attention. But see, when you go off fishing, you carry some others with you. Especially if you go on the wrong day. When you ought to be out there doing other kind, kind of fishing. You know, to fish. And I love to fish. I went fishing. I'll tell you about it in just a minute. Yeah, I went fishing. Hadn't been too long ago. God had to get my attention. But he showed his lordship here. He showed it in their fishing. The Bible said they went fishing. And the Bible said they caught nothing. In verse number three, they went fishing. Somebody said, why did they catch nothing? God is, control, is in control over the fish. You remember old Jonah over there in Jonah chapter number two? You remember when he went under? You know who God spoke to? He spoke to the fish. He spoke to the whale. Somebody said, what does that mean? He knows fish language. <laughs> he made them. He created them. And he spoke to the fish. God is Lord over creation. He created the fish. These men were fishermen. They made their livelihood. They knew where to go. They knew what kind of bait to use. Sometimes we don't know what kind of bait to use. And if you got any other Bible other than the old King James Bible, you're using the wrong bait. You won't catch too many fish. They knew. And they loaded the board on the ship. And I really believe this. I believe Peter wanted to go back fishing for a livelihood. Why would God get his attention? I believe he's want to, you know, you know, sort of back off a little bit. It's following this man isn't too good for us. I'm going fishing. But I tell you, God, the Lord, tarried with them all night. And the Bible said all night long they caught nothing. You know why they caught nothing? God's in control. He knew where the fish was. He said, all right, all you fishes, go on to the other side of the ship. <laughs> they went to the other side of the ship. But the next morning, he's standing on the bank. And John said, it's the Lord. You ever get so far away from God and so backslidden, you don't even know who he is when he comes, when he speaks, when he touches you? Well, that might have been God. That might not have been God. They done lost vision of him. Boy, we need to keep a vision of God. And said, hey, boy, you caught in a fish? Nothing. He said, hey, I was one crate of get cast that net over on the other side. There's where that cast them on the right side. You're fishing on the wrong side. And that's where we're at sometimes. We go out sometime without talking to God and having the Lord with us. God knows where we ought to be fishing. And they cast their net on the right side. And they fill their net up. You know why they fill their net up? He's God. I mean, He's Lord. 
And then he gave them good leadership. Good leadership. Lordship gives good leadership. When you let God be God of your life, He'll give you good leadership. And until you let God be God of your life, you'll not have no leadership. God leads His flock. Whether it's in a little ship, a big ship, out of the ship on dry ground, thank God God's in control. And He said, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. That's a wonderful thing. He is Lord. Why well, is a lot of preaching in this John chapter number 21? I, I want to be able to follow the Lord. Uh, we've had a little problem back uh, last year to come in the church there. And uh, you know, when you go in a big building program, you have a little problem. And... Uh, uh, you're spending all that money, you know, when things are happening and the, uh, the buildings are beautiful and everything you're doing is wonderful. But then when there's more going out than what's coming in, it ain't going to be long until it ain't going to be none going out. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we just need to be wise. Yeah. And I said to him, I said, hey, look, something's got to give. When there's more going out than what's coming in, it ain't going to be long. Ain't nothing going to be going out because it's got to come in. And we have never, we hadn't even, we've not even tried to raise one dollar. And we've had camp meeting for uh, some about 31, 32 years to a year. We're talking about $40,000 and never had to raise a dollar. God has showed Himself as our provider and he's met our needs. And I said, that's wonderful. Come to our camp meeting, we'll put you up in a nice place. Come to our camp meeting, don't have money, get gas, get back home, we'll put some in your pocket to, before you can get back home. Right, we'll feed you food you can't buy at the restaurant. Yeah. The best. You won't find it anywhere else. I mean, you know, we started out. A little old, uh, I built a little old shack out back. It was Wapsat. I mean, it went up Wapsat. I used uh, uh, just what I could get with lumber and material and pick up here and there, knock the nails out and drove nails in. First camp meeting we had under 10. I called Brother Rice. I said, Brother Rice, I want you there. I said, I want, you, I want you to watch very careful. You know more than I do. And if God sanctions this thing, you let me know if we need to go on or not. And he was. Well, like that ain't nothing but skeeters. <laughs> we had smoke pots all over the place, you know, and them ladies were slapping their feet and their legs and, and this and that. Old Brother Billy Goose was there for the meeting. He said, hey, Brother Carl, he said, I wish you'd pray about something. He said, we had a good meeting, but we'd have just a good meeting on the inside of the building. He said, he's mosquitoes says, about ain't us to death. And we've had it on the inside of the building. I mean, we started. We didn't have anything. Uh, I, one of our men uh, went downtown there and bought a freezer there, and I didn't even know what was doing on credit. Had a freezer there and stove in that little building. But boy, God's been good. He's been good to us. And boys blessed us and gave us land and buildings and all of that stuff. Finances. But it was going out too fast and I knew it. I said, hey, we've got to pay some utility bills and we've got to do all this here. And <laughs> then a little problem come up. Well, make a long story short, Brother Jeff, I just wanted to back off. I sort of got like Peter. Well, I do better off. I just let somebody else have this thing. I, I'll just find me a place, maybe preach, maybe uh, uh, have a few meetings, you know, like old brother Tully there, maybe uh, fill in churches and this and that. I'm sure God wouldn't care about that. So I'd fenced all one day, April the 7th. I won't ever forget it. <laughs> I fenced the day before that. Got up that next morning. I done a little, I got one of them one man uh, post old diggers. I went and bought me one. You got to understand, I'm 70 year old. I'll soon be 71. 
I got that little one man post old digger. You seen him? <laughs> My wife said, what are you going to do there? I said, I'm fixing to drill some holes. We could put up some fence and get some goats to take this here grass off where I want to mow it. <laughs> and I got that post old digger boy and I'd been fencing on and I was just wore out. And I, I used that morning. Man, I was tired, Brother Tully. All this here, I was facing this and doing this and trying to put up with this and handle this in the church. And I was thinking all the time, God knew my thoughts like he knew Peter's thoughts. And he knows your thoughts. You might, you might be thinking, I'll just bail out. I'm saved anyhow. I'll let somebody else have my job in the church. They can do a better job than I can. The Lord might not want that. Yeah. Peter said, I go fishing. I got up that morning after I drilled a few holes there and put those posts in the ground. I've got a little 10 foot aluminum boat I fish in. I've caught a whole bunch of crappie out of that boat and had a bit of problem. It's light. The reason I use I fish behind the levee, don't fish on Real Foot Lake, and I throw a rock and hit Real Foot Lake. Everybody wants to go to Real Foot Lake. I know where the fish are because I got a good guide. I go behind the levee when that river comes out and fill them holes up, them are big crappie. I caught one here a while back after I, this experience I had. Weighed about three pounds. Oh, man. Yeah, I caught nine, weighed two pounds. Two pound crop is a big crappie. Yeah. God's been good to me. I mean, if you go fishing on the right time, he'll let you just to catch something to eat. Not take away from the work of God. But I got that boat, Brother Parker. I told my wife, I have my work clothes on. I'm 70 years old. I've had open heart surgery. I said, I'm going to Blue Hole. River's out. Plumb up to the levee. Current. River current. Coming through there. And I said, I'm going to paddle out there. Had all this pressure on me. Well, I lay my seat out. My seat comes out. I set it out. The shed, I was thinking, put it in my boat. I drove off and forgot my seat. <laughs> I got down there to where I put my boat in the water. I looked in the back of my old 81 Toyota flatbed truck. I had a five gallon bucket. Boy, God's good. that's not good at all. <laughs> God delivers us sometimes, even when we act stupid. I was determined to go and get some relief because I've been out there many times with the Lord. It's right now fishing them holes. It's just nobody but me and God. I took that fire. I said, I'm going out there. I took that five gallon bucket, put it in that there little aluminum 10 foot boat, turned it over, sat on the back, said, I've done this before. So here I go out. I paddle. I don't have no motor. It's about maybe 100 yards out to where the deep water is. I put in at the levee. The river's out. It's April the 7th. I go out. My grandchildren picked up some of them big red worms. I normally crappie fish, but the river's in the hole and you one going to catch no crappie. So I throw my rod and reel in my boat I got that bucket of worms, and I said, "Em young and said, Papa, you gonna catch some fish? I said, I don't even know that I fish, but I'll try. So I got out there, and I saw those big old blue cat coming up out of the water. That current pushing through a little old sort of ditch-like thing. Slew. We call them everything over there. <laughs> that water pushing up through there, and them old big catfish. And I said, oh, man. So I back out there, right in the middle, and this is the deepest hole behind that levee. Some folks said it don't have no bottom. I used to swim in it when I was a kid. Had all my clothes on, work clothes. Had my work shoes on. They was tied in two knots. So I got out there, and I'm thinking, I'll just back off. And I'll just let somebody else have the church. The Lord ain't do a better job. They, they're driving me nutty right now. I'm going fishing. 
So I got my backs out there and I said, boy, I'm old blue cat. You got to, you got to fit the pond over, ain't you? Now, that river's out, them old big blue cat. They, they come up. I saw them. I said, uh-oh. This will help me. I back off out there and it's right in the middle of the hole. I've never turned a boat over before. Never turned a boat over. Forgot my life jacket. Had nothing but a five gallon bucket and a little old uh, cooler that had a handle, don't you flip back. So I reach and got my riding reel with my left hand. I brought it up and I was going to reach up here. Now I reached, got my left hand, put my right hand, and I was going to reach up here and unwind it. Are you listening? I reached up to unwind it, and that bucket went out from under me. I grabbed hold that boat. No life jacket. Had open heart surgery. I've been working, tired. And I want to tell you, buddy, I was going under. When I went overboard, these words come out of my mouth. God, help me. I'm in 80, 90 foot water. River's out. There's no dry ground. I'm 750 yards from any tree. And I said, God, help me. Brother Andy, I find myself going under and I told the Lord from my heart while I was under that water, I said, Lord, if you don't help me, I'll see you in about three minutes. I was not scared to die. I talked with him from my heart while I was going under and I said, I'll see you in about three minutes, if you don't get me out of here, I don't know what to do. I wasn't scared to die. The fear wasn't because of scare. To die or face God, the fear was not knowing what to do. And if there's anything I could do to get me out, I knew God knew. You know what happened? I don't understand it. But I shot up out of that water like a bullet. Now I'm telling you something you hear on TV. I don't even believe in a lot of this stuff. <laughs> but I want to tell you one thing. God's a real God. God can still perform miracles. And he can deliver you out of whatever shape you get in. Even when you act stupid to get in that shape. I was going under. He brought me up. I went, the boat was bottom size up. The bottom was on top and it was floating underwater about like that. And when I shot up, I passed the boat and wasn't nothing there. Current in there. Are you listening? I went back under. I was under the boat. I had my arms on, uh, my hands on each side of the boat. I was looking up, I could see the bottom of the boat. Brother Jeff, take it for what it's worth. It's the honest truth. God got it down. It'll be at the judgment seat. I said to God, I said, God, I done told you if you don't get me out of here, I'll see you in about three minutes. My funeral passed by me. Now, don't you go out here and say that preacher, he ain't a Baptist. I'm a Baptist from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. God got me out of that water. But he passed that by, Brother Tully. I saw my people coming by and looking over that casting. I don't know how long I was under there. But I got out of there and I come up and that little old cooler was right there by the boat. The boat hadn't moved. We're, we're talking about current. The boat had not moved. I grabbed hold that cooler it had a handle on it. I hadn't even grabbed the boat. It was still bottom size up where I had a hold up when I was under it trying to get out before it passed by. I grabbed hold that cooler and I was like a fishing bobble, you know, got a fish on it. 
And I said, Lord, I've talked with you. If you don't get me out of here, I'll see you in about three minutes. And I said, bound to be a way to get me out of here. Talking to the Lord. That boat stood upright. The front end stood up in the water and it was sitting there and it was placed this way. Story, isn't it? It's a true one. Standing up like a human being, just floating, current, never moved. And I said, now, I said, now, Lord, I've got this cooler. It ain't going to hold me up too long. I'm scared to grab hold of the boat. It's done stood up right. I'm afraid it's going to sink. I'm afraid it's fixing to sink, and I'll be under with the boat. And Brother Jeff, that still small voice from my heart said this to me. Take hold of the, I was kicking my legs trying to stay up with that little old cooler. Take hold of the boat and quit fighting. That boat was, so I grabbed a hold, I had that cooler this hand, I didn't let it go. <laughs> so I took hold that boat over here on this side and got that cooler up there and my legs were wore out. I don't know, at that time, didn't know how long I was in that water. My legs was wore out. And I said, all right, Lord, I've asked you, I'm going to trust you. You said, take hold the boat, quit fighting. And I couldn't, I wore out so I couldn't pick them up, get them to the boat. And I said, Lord, my, you got time for this. I'm not overdoing it, am I? I said, Lord, my legs are wore out. I had to hold the boat. And that still small voice said to me again, take hold the boat, quit fighting. And Brother McFadden, my pants legs filled up with air like you took an air pump to an inner tube and blew them up. And my legs automatically went around that boat. I know it sounds like a tale, a wild tale, some of this or other bunch of tales. I'm just telling you, it happened to me. Now I said, what? And that still small voice said, look towards the trees. And I looked out, and there was a big tree out there. It had a limb running out down to the water. God be my witness, that boat hadn't moved until then. That boat went to wiggling. Started toward that tree. <laughs> Brother Tully, 750 yards out that boat worked its way to that tree. I got that tree and that current was so bad, that limb was running around there and I was about that far from grabbing that limb that uh, that current would whoop me back out in the water. And I said, now Lord, I'm in a fix. What do I do now? And so I made me a paddle with my hand. I put that cooler over and it still had to hold the cooler. It doesn't save my life. <laughs> and I went to, when that current whooped it back around that limb, I went to paddle it. I got over close enough and I grabbed that limb. And believe this or not, I'm telling a lot of stuff that don't sound real, but I'm telling you it happened. That limb, brother, Jeff, was running from a big tree and running down and it looked like one of them there uh, leisure chairs you kick out, you know, and you lay back in. I got one at home. I do it every once in a while. And uh, I looked and it looked like it had steps on that limb. One here and one here and one. I was wore out, I couldn't have made it if it hadn't. I didn't have to strain or nothing. And I got, I climbed up on that limb and I got to crying. And I said, Lord, I am sorry that I even had the thought of walking off And I said, I know you saved my life. You got to understand, you just don't shoot up out of water like somebody's got their, we used to go swimming and us boys and 
we'd put our hands together and they'd put their feet up in there and we'd say, one, two, three, and we'd die. That's what I felt like when I, he had his hand up under me. I didn't hear no counting, but <laughs> I went up. I certainly went up. And that boat did this number. I told our folk, I said, you ever see a boat take legs and walk and still float? Got me to that tree. I lay up on that tree. I was just lay down. I was wore out. And I said, Lord, I don't know what you saved me for. They are dying by numbers, hundreds and thousands with this virus. I'm a 70-year-old man. I asked you to. And I appreciate you doing it. I know you've done it because I asked you to. But there's another reason. Never a word. Come that Friday night, I've been trying to get this fellow, you know, and he's all a mess, suicidal. I talked with him. I've been trying to get him in church and get the boy saved. Come that Friday night, never a word until Friday night. Phone run about 10.30. I answered phone. It was that fellow I've been talking to. He said, preacher, he said, I'm in a mess. He said, I have mistreated my wife. He said, my life is messed up. And he said, you've been talking to me before. You ain't done it a while. He said, I want you to know, if anybody can help me, you can help me. And it, the light went on. And I said, oh, God, that's why you saved my life. Heaven would have been better for me. But I'm going to tell you something. We better love him. We better be willing to go out there and reach sinners. And if you're a preacher and you're a pastor, feed the sheep, feed the lambs. He asked Peter that three times. Do you remember? Yeah. And Peter wanted to buck up in. And look back at that disciple, probably John, whom Jesus loved and said, hey, what about him? You know what Jesus told him? If I will that he tarry till I come. Has nothing to do with you. You follow thou me. God is a good God. Now I took time to share that with you. Don't go out here and say that preacher made up a story. It's not a made up story. I called my wife. I'm up a tree. <laughs> I went fishing. I got under a boat. And now, I'm up a tree. I had that cell phone in my pocket. Just bought it. I used to have one of them little openers. Just bought Didn't even know how to use it good. I lost my new glasses. These are my old ones. Hadn't even got no new ones yet. Had on Levi. Pulled it out of my pocket. Believe it or not, it come on. I could see the time. It was 12 o'clock. I left the house about something to 10. I got to where I put my boat in. It was 10 o'clock. I looked at it. So that put me out there in that water about an hour and a half. I don't know what I went on on that boat when I was seeing some of this stuff. I got an idea of God's trying to say this is what could be, but I'm going to show you who I am. I'm just going to manifest myself. I'm going to show you that I'm Lord, I'm God, and I'm in control of this current and this water. I made it. So I look, and I was trying to, I couldn't see. I was trying to find my wife's name on there. It's bad when you can't see your wife's name. <laughs> and I finally, it finally was working, and I wanted to see if it's working. And, but it had water under there, and I, I, could, I finally got where I could see it. I finally found her name, and I punched in. Couldn't hear nothing. I didn't know whether it was working or not. I said, hey. I said, uh, little woman, this is me. I mean, what do you say? I said, don't be scared of nothing, but I've turned the boat over. 
I was in the water. I'm all right, but now I'm up a tree and I need your brother to come get me. <laughs> Didn't hear nothing. I said, little woman. I said, this is me. If you can hear me, I need somebody to come get me. All right, but I'm up a tree. I was in the water. I turned the boat over. I'm all right. I said it three times. I said, well, I don't know whether she heard it or not. She heard it. I couldn't hear her. She said, I was talking back. You know what she said when, when I first called her? Brother Tully, she said, I'm always cutting up with my wife a little bit. I do cut up her once in a while. She said, I said, Really? <laughs> You, you done turned the boat over, but you up a tree, really? <laughs> so she sent them after me. Now they come in a big river boat you fish in. Biggest motor you can get. We went out there in it. After I got home, that, that ain't in my brother-in-law. He's still lost. Her oldest brother, she said, he, she called me, he called me and said, Preacher, where was you at out there? He didn't believe it. I told him, he said, we got to go see. I don't believe you was out there. I said, I'll be down there. I'll show you where we was at. And we went out there. And that big old riverboat, brother, Jeff, that time that current was pushing that big riverboat with that big motor. He said, you was not here. I said, right here where I was, right in the middle, Joe boy. He said, boy, you are one more looky preacher. I said, look, look, don't have nothing to do with this thing. It was all God. Yeah. I know you're ready to go home, but I'm going to tell you, God's a real God. He yeah. called my wife, been calling my wife ever since. Every once in a while, he'll say, boy, I don't know about that preacher. <laughs> I tell you, you got one more looky preacher for a husband. <laughs> he got out of that water. Wouldn't be no way for a man to get out of that water. God can get a man out of any situation. He's God. And so I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to look back and say, I'll just so let old brother Tully have it. He knows more than I know. I'll let old brother Jeff have it. Old brother McFadden have it. I'm not going to do it, brother Tully. I've always been one step up. I hate to get defeated by over anything. But that little trip to church almost defeated me. <laughs> so I just thought I'd stay with it. Yeah. I'm still there. We're having some good meetings. Every church has a problem sometimes. This is the first one in a number of years, but it's all over with now. It's dead in the water. <laughs> God's been good to us. So I tell you, it's one thing to be in the boat, now the boat on dry ground, but buddy... It's another thing to be under the boat. Especially when you ain't got anything. Nothing but God. 